We're gonna keep checking away at this series for building and testing a React component. If you're interested in the card above, is a link for the initial video where we build out the React tab component itself. You can also check out the last video in another card above. It gives a brief overview of testing. All right, with the housekeeping out of the way, today we're gonna do all the setup to get testing up and running on our component. So without further ado, if you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, welcome. <laughs> Uh, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. I'm starting with the React tab component that we've already built. You can find all the code on GitHub. I'll include a link in the description below. Feel free to download it and follow along. I'll forewarn you though, it's, there's, quite a bit of setup to this process, but you only have to do this on a project once and then you're golden. So please, please, please just hang in there. And if you're interested, I've created a checklist that you can download. So the link for that will be in the description below. The first thing that we need to do is add React testing library to our code base. So let's pull up the documentation. Okay. There's a line here at the top to install. This uses NPM, but we've been using Yarn, so I'm gonna modify this slightly. Uh, the name of the library should still be the same though, so I'm gonna give that a copy, and then let's pull up your terminal. And Yarn uses the keyword add instead of install, so I'm gonna say Yarn add, and then we want it to add this as a dev dependency, so I'm gonna add the dev flag. All this dev flag means is that we we don't need this package in production. This is only for testing our code within the development environment and then the name of the library. So let's hit enter and this will take a hot minute. Perf, perf, perf. Okay, perfect. We're also going to install Jess. So if we take a look at that documentation, so let's click on the docs link. There is a line up here to install Jest. So we can just give that a copy and paste within our terminal. And then Oh, well, we passed the time. Let's look at some internet cats. When we started building this application in the last video, we used next.js, but if you have a different starting point, say you started with create react app, it will automatically install just for you. If of course, it won't hurt if you add the yarn add line again. So how do you know if you have it installed? Open up your package.json file and look for the word jest. We just installed it, so there it is. Okay, we have one more package to install. This is called jest dom. Again, if we look at the top of the documentation page, then we can run this one line. Give that a copy, paste that guy in. Okay. If you're like me, you might be wondering, what are all these packages and what do they do? Well, it's a valid question. So Jest is a JavaScript testing framework that's managed by the Facebook team. Basically, it provides a foundation for all of our tests. We've included the React testing library so that we can test our React components. The Jest DOM package is an extension of the React testing library. It has a few matchers that make it easier for these two libraries to talk to each other. Our packages are in place, but Jest requires a little bit more setup. So if you head over to their documentation and we want to scroll down to the additional configuration section, let's initialize Jest. So I'm gonna say yarn run Jest init. This is just gonna ask us a few questions and build out our config file for us. Uh, would you like to use Jest when running test script in package.js, capital Y? or yes. Okay, choose the test environment that will be used for testing. Select JS DOM. Do you want Jest to add coverage reports? No. Which provider should be used to instrument code for coverage? We want Babel. Automatically clear mock calls and instances between every test? No. Okay, if we go back over to our documentation, we need to run this line within the terminal. So give that a copy and a paste. Okay, so let's go back to our documentation and it says to create a file within the root of our project called babel.config.js. So I'm gonna give that a copy. So 
So then if we go back to our documentation, it says that we need to create this file, babel.config.js within the root of our project. And we need to copy and paste this. Okay, so let's give that a save. Then, then we also need Babel to work with next.js. Okay, if we go to the next.js documentation, you'll see this snippet at the top. So this is implemented using a babel.rc file, and we are actually using a babel.config.js file. So it's the same thing, it's just in a slightly different format. So I'm gonna copy this preset, and let's go back to our code. And here, this is an array of presets. So this is the first item in its details. So we wanna paste it here within that array of presets. Okay, so we need to write a few scripts in order to run our tests. Hopefully you didn't panic and your palms didn't start sweating when I said write scripts. This is really quite simple. So open up your packages, pack it, open up, open up your projects package.json file. You should see something like this. You'll notice the name of your project at the top, React tabs, and then several different things are listed. So let's jump down to the dependency section. In the previous video, when we built our tab component, we used next.js's install script. This automatically installed Next, React, and React DOM for us. Then under the dev dependencies are the testing packages that we added. As I mentioned earlier, we only need these packages when we're developing, not in production. So they're listed in a different section. Now, going back to the top, I have a few scripts listed. Maybe you remember from our last video when we wanted to run our project locally, we went over to the terminal and typed yarn dev. Well, that's defined here in the scripts section. So when we run yarn dev, it looks at that dev line and runs next dev behind the scenes. If we wanted to build our project, we could run yarn build from the terminal and it would run next build behind the scenes. So you may not have realized it, but when we ran yarn run jest init, the first question it asked us if we'd like to run jest when running the test script in package.json. We said yes, and so it automatically created test jest for us. I do wanna point out that sometimes I'll put all of my JavaScript folders, so pages, components, and utils, inside a source directory. I could limit Jest to only run inside that source by saying test Jest source. It makes things a little bit more efficient, but since all of my folders are in the root, we will just leave it the way that it was. Anytime we want to run our test suite, we can head over to the terminal and Actually, VS Code has a terminal built in, so I like to use their terminal for testing. That way it appears right next to my code. I'm gonna type control tilde to open it up, and then I'm gonna type yarn run test and hit enter. So you should see a message that looks like this. Even though this is an error, this is perfectly fine. It's working just like it should. It's just saying that we don't have any tests within our project. Okay, so under the script section, we want to add another command. Before we close our package.json file, I wanna do one more thing. Just under the script section, I want to add another command. So I'm gonna type comma. I'm gonna say test colon watch yarn run test double dashes, double dashes watch. This script will keep watching our test files for any changes. That way we don't have to keep telling it to run the test script each time we make a change. So we just turn it on and it watches all of our files for us. Okay, so within the terminal, I'm going to run it. Yarn run test watch. Okay, so you should see something like this. Okay, I'm gonna leave you hanging. We have everything set up, and in the next video, I'll explain how to test our utility function. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've created a checklist that you can download that includes all the steps and everything that we went through to set up testing on our project. So link in the description below. As always, I've posted the code for this video on GitHub. Feel free to download it, use it, modify it, whatever, it's yours. The idea behind this video series came out of a course that I'm working on that builds a web application from start to finish. These YouTube videos have been really fun to make as we build these one-off small projects, but I wanted to do something that strings everything together, putting them into the context of a bigger picture. If this is something that you think you'd be interested in, there's a link in the description below to join the waitlist. that way you get more information, early access, and launch perks. 
If you like this video and want to see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.